you. I'm going to get this set up. Good, okay. Can you hear me fine? Great, right. well, good evening and thanks for coming out. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, information and understanding about the, the catalog over on the North Rim. And um, I hope that at any time you have a question, just go ahead and raise your hand and uh, I'll try to address it. But, um, but as I go through this, we'll have time at the end too for questions and, and all. So let me go ahead and start here. Um, and as you heard, there's Charles Buffalo Jones. Was um, he was a he was very very interested in um, the what was happening with bison um, in the United States, and and so he he was really out on a a mission to to save the bison, uh, and he was also very very good friends with Teddy Roosevelt, and Teddy Roosevelt has. Um, a strong history at Grand Canyon, and especially on the North Rim, where he spent a lot of his time coming over and doing hunting on the North Rim. So they got together and came up with an idea of, uh, well, why don't we bring some bison in here to the, and uh, have that for hunting and a hunting experience. So in 1906, uh, Buffalo Jones said, okay, I'll do it. I'll, I'll bring some in, and let's crossbreed them with cattle uh, for the purpose of being able to control them more. We really want them, you know, we want them to be uh, a little less aggressive and a little more uh, able to herd around and, and take care of. So they brought him in, and the Secretary of Agriculture um, provided Jones with a permit to have him up on the Kaibab Plateau. And uh, so that's how the story began. Now, yeah, where did they roam? Well, it only took a couple of years for them, for Jones to figure out that this experiment wasn't going to work <laughs> because the bison being coming from the, the plains and the cattle genes within them, they were more interested in, in um, grazing lands, more grassland territory, so they started to drift off down into the Marble Canyon plateau area and out into more of the grasslands. And they were having a hard time keeping them up on the Kaiba. And so consequently, um, Jones kind of gave up on the experiment, loaded up most of them, sent them off to New Mexico, and, um, and gave the rest um, to Jim Owens, who had the cattle company, the Grand Canyon Cattle Company. And a lot of his work um, was down in that House Rock Valley area. So when I talk about the marble platform, that's the House Rock Valley area. And, uh, and as you can see um, in some of these pictures, now in the top picture there, really hard to see but in between there's a gap that's uh, the, the first few animals on the left and then there's a little bit of a gap and you can see a little person in there and they're actually out there hurting those um, those bison and then you can also see the genes of the cattle in terms of the lower picture um, and so when they were first crossbred the, it really showed the cattle part really did show over time, that's changed. A lot of the um, cattle gene parts have don't appear um, in in their presence, and uh, and so they look more like bison in present day. So um, basically, Jim Owens took over, and then in uh, 1927, Arizona Game and Fish purchased the animals for for Owens, 98 of them, for $10,000. And then use that as a basis to have animals out in the House Rock Valley area, and then also send animals over to the Raymond Wildlife area. And so the, the herd was developed from, from um, this group. Okay, so then you think about, so if, if, um, if uh, Buffalo Jones, or uh, Buffalo Bill was bringing them in and that, what happened before that? Were there bison in this area? And in speaking with the Kaibab Paiute tribe, which is located over near Kanab, they have some stories, but their main stories is that it, um, the bison play just a small part in terms of, of their existence. And they um, get these stories from the pictures, the um, pictographs and the petroglyphs that are found uh, down in the Kanab Creek area. And the story goes that, yes, there was a herd of bison in the area, However, it was very limited in size, about seven to eight animals. 
And as a result of that, they didn't um, hunt them for their uh, subsistence. Uh, they honored them, but they did not hunt them. And they really relied more on bighorn sheep that were in abundance, as well as elk in the area. So that, that was their, um, how they saw the bison, is that they were very limited in numbers, mainly down in that lower grassland area around Kanab, Kanab Creek. In, um, and they, uh, they did, really didn't see the bison that playing a major part in terms of them, their living and their ability to, um, to hunt and, and gather with, with the bison meat or anything like that. So, but they do uh, find them significant in terms of their stories as living beings and how they play in their whole life cycle. So, where do they, where do they really roam once they, they got down into House Rock Valley? Well, in 1950, there was a memorandum of understanding developed Forest Service and, um, and Arizona Game and, Fin, uh, Game and Fish Department, and um, they agreed to set aside in the South Canyon area um, and the Fence Canyon allotment, and that's down just um, down below Saddle Mountain in that area in South Canyon as it drains down into the Grand Canyon. And as you can see, um, the, that they could graze buffalo and deer as long as uh, they continue to. Um, provide, um, you know, provide for water and fencing and so forth. So it was basically to keep them in this area and um, and and use it as a, a bison uh, allotment instead of cattle. And then in uh, 1984, there was an allotment plan that was developed again to bring up this 1950 memorandum of understanding, and and they approved it. Um, and that they would maintain 75 to 90 buffalo in this in this area, and uh, so you know that that was going well. And then it was sometime in the 1990s, early 2000, that um, the bison began to show up onto the Kaibab Plateau again, up into the forest, and. Uh, and some of the reasons behind that is, one is that the fencing was no longer up, and um, there was some drought time period, so the range conditions became pretty limited. And, uh, and so it's, they figured that a lot of the bison started to migrate up through the Saddle Mountain wilderness area up in there. And then um, there were also some um, major fires that occurred up in that area. And in, and in 2000, we had the outlet fire, which started in the park, and it was actually a prescribed burn that got away. <coughs> and uh, it actually reached over into the Saddle Mountain area. So it provided a, a nice open uh, terrain for the bison to travel. And it's interesting because, you know, bison do follow fire. So they're always looking for grasslands and places to go. So they ventured on up and they said, whoa, look at all this grass up here. This is great. And um, <clears throat> at the time, too, the, the uh, game of fish was trying to have some controlled hunting or some hunting, giving out um, licenses for hunting, and uh, found that, you know, okay, so they're leaving this area. Now they're up there. How can we get them to come back down? And, and actually, the bison would come down in the spring to calf. So they still kept their pattern of coming back into House Rock Valley. And uh, so they'd come back down, and so the adjustments were made in terms of hunting and license and when you could go in and hunt. And um, in 2000, between 2008 and 2010, um, the numbers kept increasing. So it started out with the 95, and by 2010, we estimate there's over 350 bison now in the herd. So even with hunting. So there's been um, hunting through this whole time period. And as you can see, it's not keeping up with keeping the numbers down. So, bison in the park. Well, the problem is, is that that 350 plus animals are now staying in the park or right there around in the forest in the park. And a lot of it has to do with, one, that they They've been now conditioned because of the hunting pressure to
to stay where they don't get hunted because in the park you can't hunt for 